In this video, we will explain mechanical action. Did this man make a mechanical action? Let us check. Of course, he did. Why he did mechanical action? Because we saw the rock moved. Did he do mechanical action now? Of course, yes. How we know that he did mechanical action? We see that its speed decreases and also its shape changes. So of course, he did mechanical action. Now, did he do mechanical action? Sure he did. Why? Because he stops the rock. So what we mean by mechanical action? A mechanical action is an invisible action done by an object on another object. We cannot see the mechanical action. However, its effects are observable. The rocky man did mechanical action when we saw the effect of his mechanical action by stopping the rock or decreasing its velocity or set the rock in motion or changing its shape. Mechanical action can be represented by a force. This hand applied a force on the box then the box will move so we cannot say that the finger did mechanical action to the box unless we see the effect of this mechanical action after the box moves so now we know that we are doing a mechanical action thus force is a mechanical action effects of a force what are the effects of a force this is the first one all these rocks damage the car let us see this video. Did this machine do mechanical action to the ball? Some of you will say no, because we didn't see any effect. Others will say, yes, there is a mechanical action. Because they noticed that the balance reached 98 kg. And it is impossible the mass of a ball to be 98 kg. So they noticed that the machine is applying force on the ball and it appears that its shape starts to change. This video explains the mechanical action deform an object by changing its shape. This is the first effect of a force. What we do when we play a free kick? Whenever an object is at rest and we set this object in motion, then we apply mechanical action. Set an object in motion by changing its position relative to a reference. This is the second effect of mechanical action. When we modify the motion of an object by changing its trajectory, or stop the motion, or change the direction, or change the speed. Look here how he stopped the ball and changed his direction. Look here how he stopped it also and changed its direction. All these are effect of forces. Here the force will maintain equilibrium without putting the ladder on the wall, the ladder will fall down. And here without putting the stones in a very specific position. Let us check this video. Here, the stone man tops the rock. But now, is he doing mechanical action? If he will leave a stone, the stone will move. 
Thus, he was maintaining equilibrium for the stone. Keep an object balanced or in equilibrium. So let us sum up. Effects of a force. Deform an object by changing its shape. Set an object in motion. Modify the motion of an object by changing its trajectory. Stop the motion. Change the direction of the motion. Change the speed. It may decrease the speed or increase the speed. Keep an object balanced or in equilibrium. These are the effects of a force. Characteristics of a force. Of course, we can represent the force by a vector, and each vector has four characteristics. Let us check characteristics of a force. We have here two pictures, one pushing the door and the other is pulling the door. First characteristic of the force is point of application, the point at which the force is applied on the object. Here, the pushing is applied between the hand and the door. And also here, the point of application is between the hand and the handle of the door. Second characteristic is line of action is horizontal. He's trying to push the door horizontally. The third one is the direction. Direction, he's pushing the door to the right. So this is the pushing force. And the last characteristic is the magnitude of the force. The magnitude, a measurable physical value of the force, and it gives us the strength of the force. Let us see the pulling force. What is the line of action of the pulling force? Here it's also horizontal. What is the direction of this force? It is to the left because the man is trying to pull the door to the left. And this is the force of pull. We can represent the force by a vector. Let us discuss how can we draw this vector in details. Each force is represented by a vector labeled as force A on B. Means that an object A exerts the force F on an object B. Thus here, the hand is our object A, and B is the second object. Then the hand apply a force on the box that we call it force A done by A on B. The length of the vector represents the magnitude of the force. Suppose the force FA on B is 100 Newton. To represent graphically a force, one should first mark the point of application. Where should we draw the point of application of the force? You can know that the contact point between finger and the box is the point of application of the force. So this is the point of application. Second, choose a scale. In order to know the length of the vector that we want to draw, we should use a scale. The force is 100 Newton. Then the scale can be for one centimeter, 10 Newton. So we will put that. So we will write one centimeter represents 10 Newton. Below the Newton, 100 Newton represents what? So I can cross multiplication, 100 times 1, 100 Newton times one centimeter over 10 Newton. The answer is 10 centimeter. We know the length of the vector that we should draw. Draw the vector from the point of application along the line of action with the right length according to the chosen scale. Here the hand is pushing the box horizontally. Then we will draw the line of action horizontally. But we should check the length must draw it 10 centimeters. So I will use a ruler. I will put the zero on the point of application. Then I will draw the vector 10 centimeter. After drawing it 10 centimeter, we should draw an arrow representing the direction that the force is to the right. And this is the force F A on B. How to measure the magnitude of a force? We can measure the magnitude of a force using a spring balance or a dynamometer. These are different dynamometers. Let us learn how to use a dynamometer. Here we apply a mass. Then we will read here Then it's 20. And the scale here is 1 Newton. Then 20 it's our value. Here it's 40. 
the reading is 40 and the scale is the 1 in Newton then 40 times 1 in Newton equal 40 Newton if I pull this one is 10 in Newton here 15 in Newton here 20 Newton and here 25 Newton this is 30 Newton also let us see this one here a dynamometer the scale is 1 in Newton and nothing is suspended from the dynamometer if we suspend them a mass from the dynamometer we can observe that the spring elongated and the reading is 1 and the scale is 1 thus we can see that F equal reading times the scale the reading is 1 and the scale is 1 then the force is 1 Newton if we put a bigger mass then the reading will change and we can read 2 scale is 1 in Newton again the reading times the scale 2 times 1 in Newton equal to 2 Newton let us check this one here the scale is 10 in Newton and the reading is 0 0.2 thus the force equal reading times the scale the reading 0 0.2 times 10 newton equal to 2 newton also this example in this dynamometer the scale is 10 newton also and the reading is 0 0.3 so here we'll get reading times the scale f equal the reading is 0 0.3 times 10 newton thus our answer will be 3 newton okay try it by yourself now this is a dynamometer you can check the scale and you can check the reading remember the formula is f equal reading times scale the reading here is 50 and the scale is 0 0.2 newton thus 50 times 0 0.2 newton equal to 10 newton this is the magnitude of the force